instability okay instability or angular stability what is the main important thing my rotor swings okay so let us derive to understand like you know this swinging and all let us derive swing equation okay so if i start swing equation actually though you know i know swing equation but many misconceptions are there faculties are maybe in some local other books also unnecessarily they are using per unit for example you know i know h per unit will be there m per unit will be there or per unit will be there or will not be there okay so dimensions has to be considered or not like you know lot of lot of misconceptions are there in this discussion we are going to handle that okay so let us derive swing equation okay so swing equation is the heart of angular stability okay so what is swing equation for example <coughs> what is accelerating torque accelerating torque equal to mechanical torque minus electrical torque okay for example if mechanical torque for example this is the rotor okay if mechanical torque equal to back torque electrical torque under that condition my system will become stable okay so my rotor without swinging will continuously rotate at synchronous speed now for example mechanical is more in the sense my primary side mechanical is more electrical back torque is less so it is going to have accelerating torque about accelerating torque already in the first like you know video already we analyzed okay now this is going to be the thing now what is generalized equation for torque okay generalized equation for torque is going to be j d square theta by dt square okay plus b d theta by dt plus k okay basically for us acceleration matters okay so because of like you know some basics are there like you know we will see in the detailed course so t is nothing but j d square theta by dt square what is this theta here mechanical okay so this is going to be j d square theta m by dt square equal to mechanical torque minus electrical torque okay now what is electrical to mechanical relation like you know mechanical angle equal to 2 by p into electrical or theta electrical equal to p by 2 into theta mechanical we discuss now what is theta m is that like you know d square theta m by dt square for example what do you say okay so this is going to be j into 2 by p into d square theta e by dt square equal to torque into let us uh, add synchronous speed mechanical okay so let us add here synchronous speed mechanical or we can convert that into electrical and 2 by p square because one more 2 by p will come now so ultimately in electrical terms how the b equation became j into 2 by p square into omega electrical into d square theta e by dt square equal to pm minus p okay power okay torque multiplied by speed is power so what is mechanical minus electrical power e is going to be accelerating power okay now <coughs> see here okay basically this particular thing okay we are going to call it as a angular momentum okay so this is called as m okay stay tuned here m per unit and all we are going to discuss okay so this is called as angular momentum okay now what it became like you know angular momentum is going to be how much is nothing but j into 2 by p square into omega electric okay and after that m d square theta e by dt square equal to pa okay now how much is theta okay for example with respect to my stator okay so my stator is going to be stationary with respect to stator my stator mmf rotate with synchronous speed okay so with respect to stator mmf or kind of resultant mmf with respect to that my rotor pull will be leading by delta in, in alternator because in our synchronous machines also we said that rotor mmf should lead resultant mmf by delta power angle or torque angle so delta plus upon that means swinging is there is going to be delta delta okay so theta electrical is going to be omega s yes, electrical into t synchronous speed plus delta with respect to stator plus delta delta 
okay now if i differentiate this okay what will happen this will vanish this will vanish so d square delta by dt square getting my point right so in the first derivation omega s will be there this is constant will vanish in the second derivation this also will vanish this only will be there so this equation became m into d square delta delta by dt square equal to accelerating power okay now what is accelerating power d square delta delta by dt square is going to be sorry accelerating power by m okay now <clears throat> see here about dimensions about to come and in stability dimensions matter okay we have to understand like you know do we use war only per unit in some areas originally is it per unit or not should be discussed okay now let us think of like you know kinetic energy basically the problem here is m variation will be more okay from like you know depending upon percentage of load m will vary and depending upon like you know cylindrical rotor salient rotor m will vary okay so m is a variation of many things okay so we are going to con actually in detail course we will see why m variations will be more compared to h variations now i want to convert this into huge variations into small variations such that we can consider one point one our operating thing as a machine constant okay so let us convert this particular m in terms of h what is h we will see now what is kinetic energy is nothing but half j omega square mechanical square okay so this is going to be half j into mechanical to electrical 2 by p square 2 by p square so this is going to be 2 by p square into okay now what is this like you know we got m value j into 2 by p square into omega e j into 2 by p square into omega e is going to be m so this is going to be half m omega e okay is converted into gh okay what is the capacity mba okay so in our machines we used to call it as yes okay so now we renamed it actually same yes also i can use okay but many textbooks use g that's why like you know it's a just a terminology difference that's it so g is going to be mba and this h is mega joules per mba okay now you are going to get a clarity between like you know h per unit or normal h m per unit or normal m you will come to know just wait okay about h mega joules per mva i have to say one thing okay for example let us think of weight of any machine okay because kinetic energy is directly related to weight moment of inertia okay for example mva <coughs> or volt ampere okay directly go to any machine transformer or dc or wherever you go okay so how voltage has to be increased we have to increase number of turns okay means that length of copper okay now if voltage is increased volume of insulation should be increased v okay now if you think of ampere a okay ampere directly depends upon area of cross section of copper okay so volume of copper requirement length of copper multiplied by area of cross section of copper will be directly decided area of cross section of the copper will be decided directly decided by current length of copper will be directly decided by voltage so volume of copper requirement directly depend upon voltage and current <coughs> volume of insulation directly depends upon voltage and current volume of magnetic material will be decided by voltage so all together like you know my machine capacity actually in the detail course i'm going to give at least like you know half an hour analysis on this basically machine weight or volume of materials used in the machine will be decided by voltage and current okay means that somehow my weight of rotor will be decided by uh, mv okay so for example if mva is more automatically weight of the machine will be more so means for example if rotor is rotating rotor is rotating definitely if the rotor is big automatically energy stored for that speed will be more if it is light means that energy stored will be less but if you think of mega joules per mva is going to be almost like you know variance will be less of course here also variation will be there but variance is going to be less okay so for any given machine okay for any given synchronous machine my designer is going to be data sheet actually in the data sheet they will give you okay h is nothing but 3 mega joules per mba 
okay so per mva how much kinetic energy is going to be stored will be given by h getting my point right now means for example <coughs> if i think of h here okay so g mva into megajoules per mva megajoules per mva is going to megajoules is going to megajoules okay now let us think of like you know uh, m now okay what is m here what is m here m is nothing but gh by 2 2 pi f 2 2 pi f pi f so pi f will be there okay so if i use pi f pi is going to be radian dimensions are very much important to solve stability problems or i can say gh by 180 f this is going to be electrical degree okay now this is going to be electrical radian now let us think of dimensions of this dimensions are very crucial what is the let me write okay so this is going to be mva right okay now what is the mva into what is h megajoules per mva divided by okay what is pi radians means frequency cycles per second so seconds will go up okay so pi is going to be electrical radian okay or if you see this is going to be mva into megajoules per mva into seconds divided by electrical degree electrical degree okay so now mva mva megajoules okay megajoules second per electrical radian okay so megajoule second per electrical radian is going to be dimension for momentum angular momentum or mvmv cancel out megajoule second per electrical degree is going to be m dimensions now of course many guys say m per unit which will not be there let me tell you about like you know that misconception like you know actually me and our team has spent almost two days because my feeling was i should be right but like you know many online platforms and like you know we brought uh, like some popular insured class notes also like you know somehow they are using per unit okay and coincidentally i'll tell you in per unit quantities in explaining per unit quantities they considered h per unit and m per unit which is literally wrong okay so let us see here now see here m is going to be gh by for example pi f okay m by g is nothing but it is not m per unit you like you know m divided by g is nothing but mva capacity mva capacity for example if i consider this as base people are writing m by g is nothing but h by pi f per unit is wrong unit is wrong because what is m unit for example let me think of m unit okay means megajoule second per electrical degree for example m by g if you apply definitely you will get dimensions only it is not a dimension less quantity to say per unit okay so what has to be done for example dimensions let me think of this is megajoule per mva divided by okay for example this is radian or degree can be written if i write 180 okay so this is going to be radian cycles per second okay so directly seconds will come electrical radian will come because everything we convert it in terms of electrical you know by multiplying 2 by p 2 by p and all okay so this is going to be megajoule per mva energy per power is going to be seconds only you know so second square per electrical radian or electrical degree is going to be m by g now can i say second square plus electrical degree when you have dimensions can you say per unit no no of course our heart should know while writing like you know we may write m per unit in future also i also can use but my heart should know that m per unit is not m per unit but is m per unit are kind of like you know m with respect to per unit of mva okay so m value per unit of mva is nothing but m by g okay so i should not write m per unit in future even if i write m per unit you have to keep in mind that because students are getting confused okay we got many mails saying like you know sir if it is m per unit or h per unit 
okay so m per unit or h per unit dimension should not be there but dimensions are there is it per unit no okay it is like you know m m value per unit of mva per unit of mva is going to be like you know, people are calling it as m per unit okay per unit of mva now for example let us think of h okay what is this h is going to be mega joule per mva <coughs> Okay, mega joule per MVA will be in seconds, right? So, for example, let me tell you one great thing about H. Okay, why, like you know, how we can interpret physically about H, I will tell you today. Okay, so mega joules energy per power is going to be seconds only, you know, dimensions. Okay, now if I say mega joules per MVA, yes, per MVA is there, can I write H per unit? No. Because seconds is there, no dimensions. Per unit in the sense, by definition, means like, you know, dimensionless quantity, dimension should not be there. Actual value in some units divided by base value in same units. But it is having units, no. How can anybody write H per unit? Getting my point, right? So H per unit should not be written. Even though we write, internally students should be known. Or like an aspirant should know that H per unit is not H per unit. H value per unit of MVA okay is going to be h okay anyway h is in seconds no of course this derivation i don't want to do maybe in the detail course i'll tell you for example if rotor is stand still stationary okay if i at no load condition if i apply rated torque if i apply rated torque how much time it takes to reach rated speed is nothing but h okay or in another way in reverse way also we can do no reverse engineering for example if rotor is rotating at synchronous speed in this direction synchronous speed in this direction if i apply rated torque in opposite direction rated torque in opposite direction it takes some time no to come to steady state or standstill condition that is called as h okay anyway about this we will see like you know at later sessions okay so conclusion is very simple here that is okay like you know m per unit is not m per unit that is m per unit of mva h is nothing but h per unit of mva okay that is like you know mega joules per mva anyway next thing is like you know this swing equation this swing equation can be used like you know when coherent systems non-coherent systems in the sense for example two alternators are there this is rotor of one alternator this is also rotor of an alternator for example both are swinging together both are swinging together okay so under that conditions we call it as a machine swinging together and for example if it is swinging like this it opposite swing it opposite swing under that conditions swinging non-coherently are swinging not together so logic is simple swinging together swinging not together swinging not together now for example okay in the next session i will tell you the clear view of like you know when machines can be considered as swinging together when the machines can be considered as swinging not together we will discuss